very warm welcome to our daily service. This week we're looking at James chapter 1, but I'm going to begin with some words quoted from the Old Testament found in James chapter 4. God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. Loving Father, we are so sorry for our pride. Please expose it through your word. And by your Holy Spirit, use these next few minutes to help us to grow in humility. To the glory of your name. Amen. Mary was a young woman with really no status. She could hardly have been lower. But she received the most exalted position possible. She bore the divine Son of God. And reflecting on that amazing grace... She said these words, known as the Magnificat, Mary's song, that we're going to say together now. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. All week we've been looking at different sections of James chapter 1. I'm going to read the next few verses. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. The philosopher Alan de Botton has described a phenomenon that I think we know very well. It's called status anxiety. In just about any setting we're in, we can be very aware of where we fit. There are certain people that are somehow above us. We defer to them. There are others we sense are beneath us. If we're not careful, we look down on them. And there are different scales, depending on what we're thinking about. It could be academic ability, it could be career, it could be looks, and instinctively we know where we fit on the scale. And for many people, life consists on trying to get higher and higher, and that's earning status and earning value and worth, and the Gospel smashes that way of looking at things completely. Because the Gospel of Christ tells us we'll never be able to climb a status ladder up to God. We'll never get high enough by ourselves. Now our only hope is to recognise our humility, that we are desperate sinners who have to cast ourselves on his mercy. We need to go low and fall down on our knees and say, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then, by God's grace, he lifts us up and gives us the gift of forgiveness and friendship with God and his family. James chapter 1 begins with an astonishing statement. Do you remember it from chapter 1 verse 2? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, how can we possibly see trials as a circumstance in which we experience joy? That's only possible as we see things from God's perspective. We need God's wisdom. And so we saw a couple of days ago about the need to pray for God's wisdom. And as we pray, we're not to be double-minded, we saw yesterday with, as it were, one foot in the world and another foot in the Word of God. We need to be wholehearted in our commitment to see things from God's perspective, the Gospel way, and to live accordingly. But what does that look like in practice? James applies it to one particular trial. It was a trial that we know from the rest of the letter. Many in the church that James was writing to knew well. The trial of poverty. They felt oppressed by the rich. And as a result, perhaps, they looked down on themselves and felt they were, they were worthless or perhaps were resentful towards God and towards others. And James points to a different way, the way of God's wisdom. 
Verse 9. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. Now, is that possible? Only by seeing things from the perspective of God and his wisdom, the gospel. You might be poor in the eyes of the world, but your true status is not how the world sees you. You are who you are in Christ. And even though you might be materially poor, you might have low status in the eyes of the world, you couldn't be higher in Christ. You have the riches of being members of God's family with a glorious inheritance for eternity in heaven. But by contrast, James writes, verse 10, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wild flower. Again, applying gospel wisdom to those who are rich. Don't be proud and think you've somehow gone up the ladder. No, that counts for nothing before God. What should really matter to you is your humiliation, because it's only as you cast yourself on the mercy of God and come low that you receive anything. If you're clinging as far as status is concerned to the things of this world, well, they won't last. They pass away like a plant, like a plant in the garden that you watered and was thriving before you went away on holiday. You come back and a few days of sun later and it's shriveled up and dead. And that's what happens to the things of this world. We've seen that very obviously in the last few months. A job that had felt so secure disappears. Savings that had looked so large have massively been reduced. And then, of course, death takes away all the things of this world. No true wisdom means looking at our circumstances from God's perspective. The things that matter as far as the world is concerned in status, well, they don't matter and they don't last. True worth and true status is found in Christ. And that is wonderfully liberating. It liberates us from status anxiety because it means it doesn't matter what happens to our circumstances. Our status and worth is secure. And this is the grounds on which we can enjoy solid joys and lasting treasure. Yes, we've been raised very high in Christ. And it's only possible because he went very low for us. We're going to express our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ now using words from Philippians 2. Together we say, We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who, though he was divine, did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He became as we are. As a man, he humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Our prayers are focused on the theme of humility and pride. O Lord Jesus Christ, who gave up all the glory of heaven and humbled yourself by taking human flesh and dying on the cross, give to us who have nothing to boast in your mind and spirit, so that whatever our circumstances, we may find our true identity and security in our relationship with you. And clothed with true humility, we may be exalted to true greatness. For your name's sake. Amen. O God, who scatters the proud in the imagination of their hearts, forgive our sins of pride, we beseech you, especially our pride of race and class. May we never despise others, but in honour consider others better than ourselves, for the sake of him who humbled himself, that he might exalt us, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And then let's say together this prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who resists the proud, and gives grace to the humble. Grant, we beseech you, that we may not exalt ourselves and provoke your indignation, 
but bow down to receive the gifts of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ went very low for us. He offered his own life for us in his death on the cross. And the only right response is the offering of all that we have and all that we are in worship. Our song, Take My Life. What we've seen today is a great challenge for some of us. If we think we're really very important, we need to recognise we're nothing except what we are in Christ. And what we've seen today is a great encouragement to others, those who feel that they're worthless in Christ. You've got great value and infinite worth and huge riches. May these truths challenge and encourage us today. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and all those we love now and evermore. Amen.